You mean to tell me? <laughs> Molly, you've been crying over a man who didn't even bother to cry over your relationship. The man didn't even mourn your relationship, honey. He moaned it. He moaned your breakup. He did not mourn it. 16 coochies since you broke up. The man has slept with 16 different women since you broke. <laughs> you cried for that. You cried for that. Child, a mess. Hello, everybody. Welcome back to my channel. My name is Queenie. For those who don't know me, <laughs> reviewing Love Island All Stars season one episode. I don't even know. Before I get into it, please make sure to like this video, subscribe and hit the bell and leave a comment down below. Sweetie, honey, darling, sweetie. Okay, let's get into the recoupling because that's where we left off. Um, we have <laughs> 16 coochies, you know, 16, one, six. <laughs> and that's just different coochies. We don't even know the frequency. And the mask talking about, I was traveling from. <laughs> All right, I'm sorry, let's go. Um, Check if he's got any, any babies on the way because honey. <laughs> Sixteen countries. Yo, okay, they were coupling. They were coupling. I'm sorry. Whew. All right. Tyler picks Hannah. <laughs> Callum picks Georgia. Chris had a really hard time, and you know his speech was piss poor. His speech was absolutely piss poor. He ended up picking Kaz, and Kaz was like me. Okay, this is the second time Kaz has gotten a well. I guess you're the only option, speech, and it's so irritating, whatever. Um, Who else do we have here? Toby picks Arabella, Anton picks Georgia, and Mitch picks Liberty. Uh, she looks so cute in that little red two-piece, did she not? Liberty looked amazing. Anyways, her speech was kind of like, uh, ugh, too. We're gonna get to that a little bit later. Let's start with Chris. Chris acknowledges that his speech to Kaz wasn't the best. However, Kaz is not even worried about herself. She's worried about Arabella. It's, I think it was the huffing and the puffing and the, like, uh, like it was like dig after dig. I sat down, I was no, like, no, bro, no, like. I wouldn't, I wouldn't mean it like that. I don't have to sleep in the bed with you if you want the full bed. Oh, no, Chris, you should share a bed with me. I definitely think he should have taken a moment to just process what he was about to say, especially because people take the speeches seriously so yeah to kind of just give cats a throwaway speech and in the same hand um or the other hand what who cares kind of slight not kind of you slighted arabella at the same time it, yeah it didn't really leave a good taste in people's mouths you know he further explained that listen i it, it's very dead with me and her I, if you call me disingenuous to me that's a, a boundary that i'm not getting back from and so kaz was trying to reason with him, but she did understand uh, what he meant. He offered to sleep outside. She was like, no, 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 no. Like, it's not a big deal. We'll share a bed. You're cool with me. Then we have Mitch, who's also in his feelings about his speech. Yo, 16 coochies. <laughs> I'm sorry. Mitch is in his feelings about his speech because he basically was at a loss for words. He couldn't really tell um liberty what he wanted to say he was more so saying basically like i'm closed off only you and here's josh snickering and i'm not gonna lie the snickering is a little bit triggering looking at you he's like looking <laughs> yeah because personality's not the same you are a bit of a dickhead around type it for that you remember what you said up there or what? Not blurred, mate, because no, I was that fucking livid. I'm on a wrong in this and the fact that I don't want to get to know any of the bird. Oh, in here? Yeah. Why would the man say, you're the only person who I want to pursue in this villa? <laughs> Mitch just stays lying. Mitch doesn't know how to be accountable. Mitch doesn't know how to be direct. And maybe it's a personality thing. Maybe he just gets flustered under pressure. Maybe he doesn't like being brutally honest with women. But honestly, at this point, you've just got to be. You've just got to be. I perceive the speech as you're the only one I want to get to know. Later on, they have a conversation where he's like, I can't even talk to the other girls because it seems like it's only me and you. And I'm like, but that's what your speech 
you got to figure out where your mind is at, okay? And you got to stop leading these girls along. Well, actually, yeah, I can't say these girls because what's her name from the last time? The greasy hair girl. And then now Liberty. Like, you got to be direct, Mitch. You, you've got to find a way to articulate yourself a little bit better. And if you do struggle with that, take a beat, which he tried to in the speech, so I'll give him that. But take a beat and say, you know what? I'm kind of at a loss for words right now. I do know that I care about you and maybe we need to work some things out. Yeah, at least start from there because don't be given promises that you can't fulfill. Toby and Arabella are now coupled up and as we know, they do have history. So they want to figure out, are we just friends or are we more than friends? Does that mean the cuddle tonight or no? Yeah, yeah. I need a cuddle oh, tonight. I'll be little spoon. At least I know what you sleep that bike next to. This is just gonna be chaos. This is gonna be chaos. This is just gonna be chaos. This is gonna be chaos. Do you think? Are we a friendship couple or not? I wouldn't say we're a friendship couple. No. Okay, cool. We... I've never been in a friendship couple before. That's what I'm saying. <laughs> I don't think we. I don't think we could ever be friends. Okay, cool. Good. Holiday fling is all that I get from them. As Cass said, this is a very messy, chaotic situation. They're going to be, as I assume, a little bit more romantic than just like a friendship couple would be. But they're also not a romantic couple of like it's like a friends with benefits they're friends with benefits they're friends with benefits and i hope that they both know this because i don't see toby as being anyone who's trying to take arabella seriously anytime soon arabella we know falls harder and faster than she anticipates she would so girl protect your heart i don't know if toby's going to be on the same type of time you are but don't be in another situation where you're clearly not closed off but you close yourself off and then you get pissed off when the person doesn't reciprocate just saying so in the morning debrief, we have Tom who's gassed to be partnered up with Molly. He says that he's, did I say Molly? Yeah, 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 Molly, yeah, yeah, yeah. He said he's gonna focus on her. Josh thinks that Sophie is a very nice girl, but he's aware that Chris is in the picture. And Chris the night before had went and told Sophie, hey, I'm not letting up. I'm still gonna pursue you. Georgia and Anton are just two blind mice, honey. They both don't know what they wanna do. They like each other, they don't like each other. They wanna try something, it's too much going on. Anton is still willing to give it a try. Georgia already said she got the ick, so. Okay, anyways. We have Tyler who is shocked at how comfortable he's gotten with Hannah, but he can sense that Hannah is being very reserved. I wonder, actually no, I don't wonder why. She's older, she has a child. There's more at stake when it comes to Hannah. So just diving head first with somebody in this Paradise Island is not the best uh, plan of action for her. So yeah, I don't know what Tyler's intentions are with Hannah, but I do understand why she would want to take it slow. Definitely. We have Georgia S who is... Yeah, she says she's not feeling Callum as much as she was feeling Toby and Tom because they gave her that oomph. Mm, and Callum just doesn't do that for her. When are you going to go and tell Callum that? Spoiler alert, she doesn't. Like, you are just like, to like, girl, I'm sorry. This girl was mad at Toby for like three days last week. And they are just alike. They're just the same. <sighs> Let's move on. Toby is trying to get to know Molly and Molly is like, hey, listen, I'm a slow burn. I'm all that stuff. You also have history. How do I know that the door is fully closed with the people you have history with? Who do you okay. think I was going to pick? Well, you've only been really chatting to me, haven't you? Ain't ya. How do you feel with Arabella? I think she's quite excited, you know. You think? Mm. If it was going to be together, then it would have happened on the outside. Don't close it off, though. I might not be able to chat to you, though. You can still chat to me with pleasure. Let's just nip this on the bud right now. In this villa specifically, because I'm not going to say spinning the block never works, but in this villa specifically, how has spinning the block benefited anyone? It has not worked in anybody's favor. So Molly trying to encourage him to, to see if there's still potential there with the open doors, close them all. Close them all. Something about this villa in particular is giving very toxic when it comes to opening up those, those unresolved relationships. Keep it shut. Especially, Molly, if you don't want to discuss what actually transpired in your relationship and if growth has come out of that breakup. Otherwise, you'll find out that the man has been sleeping with 16 different coochies. 
And you was crying over that man. You were crying over him. 16 coochies, you know. <laughs> Guys, I'm not going to get over that. Now I want to know if she had been sleeping with anybody. I hope we get, to, we get that answer in the next episode. We gotta wait till Sunday. And Sunday, I'm not even gonna be here. I'll tell you guys that from now. I have plans on Sunday, so uh, the video is definitely gonna come out late. Will it be the same day? Maybe. But it definitely will be late. Um, Yeah. <laughs> anyway, let's move on. Georgia wants to know who Tom would have picked if he had the opportunity to choose who to couple up with. If I was to couple up with you, I, I wouldn't have got the really chance to really get to know her. Um. Still fancy you a bit. Of course you do. When you're around, I can't be like, come do you on, get Tom. It? You don't yeah. need text button it. So you just pull me. <laughs> In this conversation, she says that she has butterflies for Tom, but she's not quite sure if it's because it is Tom or because Tom is now with somebody else. Girl, don't piss me off. What do you mean? You like emotionally unavailable people, and then you be confused when their emotions are unavailable. What do you mean you now are more interested in him because his attention is elsewhere? How does... She further on uh, says that um, Callum is more invested than she is right now. And so it's making her kind of hesitant to want to pursue things with him. Uh, as we know, fresh out of a relationship. But does that matter to Callum? Clearly not. So... Um, yeah, it's definitely a choppy situation to jump into. If he does seem a lot more invested than you are, I do see why you would want to take a step back, but you probably should let him know. Does she let him know? No. They actually have a conversation and she's like, you are the one I want to be coupled up with. You and I have the strongest uh, relationship, whatever, whatever. She referred to Tom as a, as a coffee and Callum is a brewed tea. And basically the difference is the coffee gives you a quick high, but then you crash quickly as well. Yes, the tea might take longer to, child, I'm even lost in this metaphor. The tea takes longer to brew, but the feelings sustain for longer. Point of the matter is she's choosing the safe option, which she believes at this point is Callum. We're gonna find out how she feels about these 16 bodies. Mitch and Liberty have, I think, what, the 17th conversation about where things stand between them and they finally decide to just be friends. I couldn't give you a real speech because I, I had no idea how I feel about you. These girls in here that, quite frankly, don't want to talk to me because you see how upset you are. I, I'm, a, I'm at a stage where I don't know if this is even fully salvageable. I might have misinterpreted his speech from the night before, but it definitely sounded to me as if he was going to put all his attention in on Liberty. Now he's saying, listen, this relationship stresses me the hell out. I can't even talk to the other women or they don't want to talk to me because you're in the mix. So I think we should just lock it off. Fine, it was a mutual decision. Liberty has been told even by Mitch that she deserves better. Liberty, hopefully you've been deeping what's been said to you, what you've been saying to yourself. You deserve better, all right? Don't be settling for nobody who treats you the way that, that Mitch has been treating you. And you just went through this with Johnny as well on Love Island Games. Like, girl, come on, come on. Let's, let's not keep settling for this foolishness, all right? And then Mitch, anybody who pursues Mitch in this villa, in this season, I, I have questions for you. I would side eye you because history has shown that maybe Mitch is not at the maturity level that he believes that he is. And so to want to nurture a relationship is going to require a lot of growth from him. It is. It is. It's not to say that he's incapable, but the messiness is from immaturity. The inability to properly articulate himself with the women that he wants to pursue, immaturity. The lack of accountability whenever he's caught in a situation, immaturity. The man needs to grow. He might think 27 is a big age, but honestly, your, your brain just fully formed two years ago. So yeah, ladies, watch out for Mitch. Unless you just want to fling, then fine. I remember saying that Chris and Sophie's banter is kind of weird. I feel like a lot of his jokes go over her head, but maybe not. You can hypnotize a chicken. I feel like you remind me a bit of a hypnotized chicken. I was gonna ask you what your love languages are, right? But also I feel like that's cheating. One of them's definitely touch. <laughs> because you do that all the I time. I always do that, yeah, don't I? Do that. Yeah. I'm not even sure if I could see the vision. 
I don't know if I do or if I don't. Chris even having a crush on Sophie is just out of left field for me to begin with. I do like the conversation that they had about the love languages where he was like, I want to ask, but that's kind of cheating. I'd rather just figure it out. I'm keeping that. The next time somebody asks me, what are your love languages? Well, the more we interact, you'll, you'll figure that out. I like that. Yeah. Let me not give you the cheat sheet. Learn me. All right. Jeez. So, um, they're going great or whatever, but we still know that Josh is in the picture and he's not letting up on pursuing Sophie either. You're naturally, I'll naturally spend like, more time with you. Yeah. In an ideal world, yeah. who, who would you want to be into and who would you want to be into? A man or the answer? Really? Yeah, man or the answer. Just a little bit. These two talk more about villa stuff than actual compatibility between the two of them. They also have uh, less of a boundary when it comes to the physical because they're sharing a bed too. So I don't know with them. Is it just a sexual chemistry? Is there actual potential for compatibility? Don't know. Sophie, you got your pick of the litter at this point. So love that for you. Um, it's not going that great for all the uh, ladies of color here, but it's fine. It's fine. Um, if I was to pick for her, I think I would pick Chris, even though we've now seen a side of Chris that's like, oh, okay. So this happy go lucky guy is not necessarily a facade, but it's definitely a front and facade would be the same thing. It's, uh, mm, it can be used at times as a defense mechanism, but I see more potential with Chris than I do with Josh because Josh to me just looks like he wants to dick somebody down. Cause what happened to your dangerous sexual connection with Arabella? That's just completely off the table now. All right, sure. Um, in the evening, Arabella wants to touch base with Chris so that they can clear the air. It would just be nice to be able to just move forward and friends. It's a small villa, We've, like, we're around each other all the time. Mm, it's all good. But you're feeling fine? Absolutely fine. Are you fine? I am fine. I feel like you're still being a bit standoffish. Not at all. Babe, I don't argue. I told you that yesterday. Yeah, I know you don't argue, but I you... talk. Ha I'm having a conversation. Okay, Let's okay. just talk. Okay, I am talking with you, but like... I'm not accusing heart. you of not talking. I do... Okay. I do this sometimes as well. I understand where Arabella is coming from because Chris did seem kind of cold and callous to her in this conversation. However... You can't be mad at somebody because they didn't answer a question how you wanted to uh, you wanted them to answer it. You asked, "Are we good?" He said, "Yes." Well, I feel like you're still mad. Uh, 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 uh. Don't do that. The man said, "What?" He's good. Take him for what he said. Don't try to now try to understand his brain. No, but I just feel like you y'all barely know each other. You don't know how he really feels. He might actually still be hurt, which I do think that he is because he was offended by her calling him disingenuous. He brings it up quite a few times. But the fact of the matter is you asked a question, he answered, end of story. You can't be mad at people because they don't handle situations the way that you want them to handle it. He also then apologized for the speech that he gave because it was insensitive. He acknowledges that. She accepted the apology. Let's pack it up and move on. The episode ends. Oh, <laughs> the episode ends with a game of truth or dare. However, the Islanders get to pick what the truths and the dares are. Love it. Let's go through the list. It's a long one. Tyler had a 20 second snog with Kaz. She was very disinterested. Very, she was, she mm -mm, didn't even touch the man. Love that for you, girl. Josh did a sexy dance for Sophie, honey. It looked like a child who had to pee. You know what a toddler does like a little. Let's work on it. All right. Georgia H is most attracted to Chris and Mitch. Anton thinks that Arabella is the most disloyal. And this is not the second time she's been called disloyal. I don't know. There's there's a theme happening here, Arabella. I, I have questions. Sophie would still have chosen Josh if she had the opportunity to. Liberty fancies Chris outside of Mitch and also wanted to kiss Toby just for bands. I'm sorry. I know a lot of my audience feels how they feel about Toby, but honey, the way that Toby lifted up Liberty, I said, uh oh. -uh! I don't know. It did a little something to me. It did a little something to me. I'm, I'm going to be completely honest. All right. Tyler looked very unmagical 
<laughs> very, <laughs> very unmagical when he was doing his magic mic dance uh, for Hannah. Josh's favorite Islander is Hannah and his least favorite is Mitch. And he says that uh, Mitch deflects a lot and he doesn't hold himself accountable. Agreed. Fully agreed. Even Mitch didn't actually deny it. He was like, I deflect because I'm, I'm bigger than having to address the situation. I don't want it. So immature. So like we said earlier, image. All right. Okay. Chris thinks that Arabella is playing the biggest game. Chris, even if you felt that way, coming off the heels of what you just came from, I think that was a poor choice. Pick somebody else just for banter who you know is going to like, honestly, I feel like even if he kissed Kaz, to say, girl, you here for a holiday. Maybe you're like, I don't know. Just Arabella, bad choice, bad timing. She didn't like it either. Um, Georgia's top two guys outside of Callum are Tom and Toby. She also said that she enjoyed this three-way kiss that they had together. Girl, I thought you're creating a fantasy threesome team. Then we have Callum. Funnily enough, he was asked, who would you rather have coupled up with if not Georgia? He didn't want to answer that. So Anton said, okay, how many people have you slept with? Since your breakup with Molly, this man said 16. One, two, three. Oh, 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 oh. 16. Oh, 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 oh. In six months. But I bet you're glad you didn't get back with him, aren't you? Yeah, just a bit. Oh, yeah, fucking hell, Anton. When are you first girlfriend? Yeah, but I was also travelling for a month as well. Listen, do you? That's what I did. Listen. I know there are people out there who don't care how many bodies they rack up. They genuinely don't care. But you mean to tell me after a breakup that's only been six months since, you had the time to sleep with 16 different bodies. Again, we don't even know the frequency. We just know it was 16 different coaches. All right. And then you're gonna come back here talking about, I want you back, I want you back. And Molly didn't even know about the bodies. So I'm wondering what was she pissed off about because she said she didn't appreciate how he acted um, after the breakup. What was he doing that you knew about? Cause honey, clearly he was up to way more than this. And this is why I said, maybe about four videos ago, if you're gonna want to reignite something with someone who you actually have an extensive history with, not no Tom and Georgia foolishness, no, like an actual relationship, you need to address why did their relationship dissolve? You need to address how they're gonna do a plan of action for um, resolving the things that were issues in their relationship. And then you need to see that plan come to fruition. All these things need to happen. And here was Molly crying over a man who she now seems to have lost respect for over the fact that he slept with 16 different bodies. It might not affect anybody else. Somebody else might say, whatever, it's 16 people. Like, who cares? Not that big of a deal. It affects Molly, though. Molly, you weren't asking the right questions. You just wanted to go back to that old thing because it was comfortable, because the breakup was painful, because you're in this awkward situation, but y'all weren't having the right conversations. Imagine now you get back with this man. You've committed to be with him again. And then the question comes up. Now you look like boo a damn fool sleeping next to a man who you now feel disgusted by because he begged 16 bodies in the six month span after your breakup. If you're going to spin the block, anybody who's listening to this, ask the right questions. Why did our relationship break up? What is your plan of action to address those things that made us break up? And let me see the plan in action. Because what are you going back for? You're going back to the same bullshit because y'all refuse to address it. And y'all just want to get back into that comfy, cozy bed that led to a breakup. Anyways, you're going to have the same result. Anyways, who am I? I'm not in the relationship, so we'll see how uh, Molly responds to this. We'll also see how Georgia responds to this. This will be interesting. So a reminder again, I won't be here on Sunday at my regular time. It might come later. If you're international, it'll probably be the next day. If you're here in North America, 
it'll just be like in the evening or something. So as always, like, comment, share, and subscribe, and I'll see you in the next one.